Blog Talk Radio. Good morning, everybody. This is Truth Light, and our show is The Light of Truth. And uh, today we're talking about your monkey sphere. I uh, remember I did a class at one point, uh, maybe a year, well, I guess it was more like two or three years ago now, and uh, we talked about a monkey sphere, and and, uh, a lot of people had never heard of it. So we're going to talk about what your monkey sphere is and how it affects your life, and uh, that way you can sort of um, begin to, oh, uh, just get a better handle. It's some, it's very interesting. So if you've never heard of a monkey sphere, we're going to talk about it. And it's actually based on, uh, I'm trying to pull up some <clears throat> some different facts so that I have some bullet points here because it is something that I just sort of, you know, one of those things you just know. But then as I was doing my meditation last night, I got that this should be the show, the title for the show or the um, topic for the show, that is. And uh, so... That's what we're doing. So what is a monkey sphere? (laughs) It's kind of a fun word anyway. It's not so funny when we find out what it is, but it's a fun word. Um, So they did experiments, and we won't talk about the how or the the details because, well, I just don't want to think about it. (coughs) But um, they did some experiments with monkeys, and they found that um, the monkeys' brains... Um, we're only really able to to handle knowing, understanding, interacting with um, about 50 individuals. So when you look at, I don't even know what they're called, packs, tribes, whatever of, of monkeys, um, you'll find that they don't really go over 50 in a community of monkeys. And that's because when you go outside the number of uh of individuals that you can really that you can handle knowing understanding learning about caring for etc there is typically a limit to uh to how much how much compassion we have to give how much energy we have to give how much understanding we have to give that kind of thing and so that's your monkey sphere now for humans it's a little bit different obviously um, but not by much because, you know, we're a lot like monkeys at times, <laughs> sometimes more than others. <laughs> and uh, so our monkey sphere tends to be about 150 people. <coughs> Excuse me. And so you'll find that most people, almost everybody, really has a hard time um, processing information for more than about 150 people in their life. And this counts as, oh, you know, the uh, the babysitter, the, uh, the person you talk to, the neighbor you talk to every day as you go to work, <coughs> in addition to your friends, your family, your coworkers, that kind of thing. And, and what we're talking about is really um, being able to feel compassion and understanding really as if these people are people, the people who are outside your monkey sphere. (coughs) I apologize again for the cough. I'm actually finding out that gluten seems to be at the heart of it, so I have to go back to the gluten-free. But Okay, so moving along past the food allergies. Sorry about that. Um, So in other words, say the Philippines, the big storm in the Philippines, you know, that was a huge, huge tragedy. That was a huge impact on so many people. But out of self-protection and out of um, just survival mode for ourselves, we we tend not to see, we see a number, right? So although over 10,000, last report, I don't watch the news, but at the last report I saw, over 10,000 people were assumed dead. Now, for us, it would have more of an impact if the uh, the person who works at the desk right next to us or 
the babysitter who takes care of, of our kids or the neighbor's kids or something, a kid in the neighborhood that we know, somebody that we interact with day to day. That one person passing away would have a greater impact than the 10,000 plus people in the Philippines. Now, that's because those 10,000 people are outside of our monkey sphere. They're not um, in our regular processing. We don't necessarily even see them. And I know it sounds horrible, but just work with me and be honest with yourself. <coughs> people tend not to see those big numbers as actual individual people that you feel um, dramatically about or you feel intensely about as you do somebody who you see every day or interact with on a regular basis who is a part of your monkey sphere, um, this would impact you more than those people outside yourself. So this sounds kind of boring and kind of academic, but it's not really. We're going to take it to a whole other level. Um, <laughs> and you guys, you know, remember that when I do these shows, it's um, it's very much just guided. So the information that whoever is going to listen to this show needs is what's going to come out, and there's I don't have notes or bullet points or anything. It's really kind of ridiculous, but that's just the way that my gift, my particular gift works. So when we're talking about our monkey sphere and when we're trying to figure out what is our monkey sphere, it's uh, it's different for everybody. Yes, the typical human brain, et cetera, if you go science-based, um, really can process about 150 people in their monkey sphere and really not anymore. Now, it's my feeling and my belief that we're in a time of enlightenment and there are those of us who are able to experience the news about what happened in the Philippines and feel an impact and compassion and feel every single... I'm not going to say feel every single one of those 10,000 people. I think we can, but we don't, because it would be too much for us to process on a human level. I think there are a lot of us in this ascension process that are beginning to feel outside of our monkey sphere, and that's part of what's creating a lot of the anxiety people are feeling and a lot of the uh, the push and the, you know, I feel, I, I think there's a lot of people feeling this acceleration within themselves and within what they do in life and they don't understand it. And I think that this is a big part of it is the fact that throughout history we have had this monkey sphere. We have had that we we really um, only process what's happening with the people within our own personal monkey sphere. So, for example, in the example day, there's some YouTube videos that I'll, I'll post the links to on the show description uh, when we're done. But <coughs> this, uh, and, and they're short, but they're very informative. Um, so in the past, it's been... You know, okay, so you have this garbage man that comes and pick up, picks up your garbage every week. And so without this garbage man, what would your house look like? But he's typically not a part of your monkey sphere. Typically, it's some magical something that happens. You put the bags in the can and you put the can by the road and a truck comes by and your garbage goes away. And very few of us think about the fact that there is a person with a family and a life and concerns and hopes and dreams and thoughts and fears and what have you, driving that truck, taking your garbage every single week. How many of us really acknowledge the garbage man who comes and, and takes away all this all this stuff, that this toxic stuff that would just be rotting in our lives otherwise? Very important person in our life, but we really don't ever acknowledge we may acknowledge the truck oh the garbage truck is here you know but we don't really stop and go i wonder what that garbage man's hopes and dreams are i wonder how his wife is doing i wonder how you know does he have kids are they happy should i do something to reach out and help him should i you know we don't we don't really do that some of us do but not many and so if you do that then that means the garbage man is a part of your monkey sphere if you if you think about the garbage van having an entire life, right, and, and family and hopes and dreams, and he's probably a part of your monkey sphere, but that's not typical, you know. Or the person at, at the power company who, I mean, out here, you know, 
we uh, we sometimes have power outages because of the snow, which, by the way, we're getting today, which is amazing. It's a beautiful, beautiful snowy morning on the mountain today. And uh, anyway, so <coughs> the uh, the linemen or whatever it is you call them that have to come out and, and take care of the lines when the power goes down, you don't really think about them. Typically, they're not in your monkey sphere. You, the lights are off, and you just want your lights back on, right? And so unless we're in a disaster sort of situation where the heroes in the big trucks come and turn on the power, they then become a part of our monkey sphere because we're acknowledging, oh, my God, look at you, you came, you're like a hero, whatever. Here, <coughs> where I live, it's kind of the plow the snow plow drivers, which, I don't know, they're, to me they're kind of like these cowboy heroes who come on these big trucks and make it so we can get out of the neighborhood. And, you know, and so although I see the truck, I think about the person within it, and that's, but that's just me. I don't know that everybody does that. And so it's really understanding <clears throat> one of the processes that's happening in this ascension that we're going through is um, is that, I believe the monkey sphere limitations that we've had in the past are beginning to expand. And I think we're moving past that. The limitations came from the third dimensional world where it was strictly that we were in our brains. We're no longer living from our brains. We're now moving into the heart. And so this is part of the ascension from third dimension into the other dimensions. Some people say fourth, some people say fifth. You know, it's kind of semantics at this point. You just have to go with, okay, there's a big shift coming, (coughs) big shift in process, and maybe not get so worried about labeling it and just figure out how to maneuver through it, you know. So one of the shifts that's, that's happening is this monkey sphere that once kind of kept us Um, balanced and, okay, I can process this much information and no more. It was kind of like the hard drive, right? Your brain is kind of like your hard drive. And so that monkey sphere gave you, this this is the max that my hard drive can handle. And although I feel compassion and I, you may feel, you know, um, if you hear about, something like the Philippines or the volcanoes that are going on or whatever, you may, if you're a praying person, you may put those people in your prayers or something, but but it's still a number. You're still, even if you see the faces on the news, that kind of thing, you're still not typically getting into the understanding of what is happening in each and every life of those 10,000 people. Because each and every one of them have a mother, a father, sister, brothers, kids, pets, whatever, they have things going on, they're hungry or they're cold or they're joyful or grateful for what's what has been left or whatever it is. We don't know what they're experiencing, you know, because they're not in our monkey sphere. <clears throat> but that's been your brain's way of saying, okay, yes, you can wish the best for them, but you cannot process what's happening there because it's just too much. You'll go nuts. It will fry your hard drive if you try to. When you try to expand too far out of your own monkey sphere, your hard drive begins to fry. So what's happening now is we're moving beyond third dimension. The monkey sphere thing is a very real thing, and so I definitely encourage you to check it out and begin to understand it. But also in doing so, realize that as we came into this rise of consciousness and we move into this new era, and these shifts are occurring, and, and I don't know how to explain it. I want to get somebody in here who can explain it, but there are portals opening and closing and energy fields shifting, and <coughs> there are all these different things happening around us energetically, and we're just trying to, like, you know, bob and weave and maintain in these crazy seas of energy as we're shifting up to these higher states of consciousness. So understanding the monkey sphere aspect of things is important because that's one of the biggest things that's shifting as we go through this change. And so if you can at least understand the changes that are happening, it's like when you are a teenager and you're moving into young adulthood or you're a kid and you're moving into your teens or whatever and your body's got all these changes going on, 
you have to kind of understand them or else they make you a little crazy, right? So it's important to gain an understanding of what's happening in order to be able to function as we move through it. This monkey sphere thing that we talk about, and I do encourage you guys to... um, you know, to call in, ask questions, make comments. We also have the chat room chat room open. It it doesn't have to just be me talking, you know, and that kind of thing. It can be a, a two way conversation. So <coughs> you know, I wasn't I wasn't coughing at all until I got on the show. Isn't that interesting? So um when we come back to this this monkey sphere that we we have going on as human beings It helps to explain how some people um, have loads of people around them all the time. They can be in big crowds, that kind of thing. That's somebody, and it's all based on your brain, okay? It's all based in how your brain functions. It's very scientific. Um, Some people may have a monkey sphere or a capacity to handle the realities of up to 150 people, right? So this is somebody who is very social, maybe they do like sales or customer service, that kind of thing for a living because they can be compassionate and relate to all these different people. Um, It doesn't mean that those people are forever in their monkey sphere, but they're able to stretch their monkey sphere so they can connect with them moment to moment as they need to, and they're able to feel compassion and feel for that person and understand that person, even though it's kind of expanding out that monkey sphere. Some people, maybe they have a sphere of 10 or 20 people, of 50 people. You know, some people are very reclusive and and sort of introverted. Um, And not to say all introverts have a small monkey sphere. That's not what I'm saying. There are people who really cannot handle, and I know some of them, they, they can only handle a few people at a time. And then they've got their family and maybe <laughs> maybe some people that they relate to as far as public figures, that kind of thing, um, people that they learn from or listen to or read their books or whatever. They may consider those people within their monkey sphere because they they care about what's happening to them specifically and that kind of thing. This doesn't mean one person has a smaller brain than the other necessarily, I don't think. Um, I think it has to do with, you know, it's not one is smarter than the other, in other words. It's it's just how things are processed. And so understanding this about people is also a really good thing because sometimes we think everybody else should be just like us as a as a culture or as a race, a human race, that kind of thing. And that's not necessarily the case. So when you look at somebody, for instance, I have somebody in my life who... <coughs> is very um, hermit-like, right? And so really, if you put more than maybe six people for him to deal with, he is not happy. He is not happy. He is difficult to deal with. He, it's just too much, you know, because he has a very small capacity for that monkey sphere. Then, you know, you look at other people who are interacting with all these different people and they have all these different friends and all these different business acquaintances and, um, and they maybe they volunteer for social organizations and they're feeding the homeless and they're just out there really doing so much with so many different people, that's somebody with a larger monkey sphere. Now, for one person to look at the other one and say, what the heck is wrong with you, is probably pretty normal, but it's really just a difference in the size of their own personal monkey sphere. I believe that you can expand it out, and I believe what's happening as a mystic, okay, when I tune into it intuitively, what I see is that the monkey sphere thing is very earthbound, third-dimensional processing. And as I said before, we're moving into the heart and out of the head, and uh, and so we're processing things with our heart more than our head at this point. This is really freaking some people out because they have never been taught 
to just listen to their heart. To them, in a lot of cases, it seems as if you're being very airy-fairy and dreamer-like and and just not logical or rational. But the reality is there's a new logic, a new way of thinking um, that's processed through your heart. And actually, that's, that's a whole other show that I'll try to find somebody who really understands it because I don't. But did you know that your heart has its own brain? I just learned this maybe a couple of years ago. The first organ to form in the human body is the heart, and it has its own tiny little brain that continues the process of development, and then, you know, after a while, your your human brain actually develops. So they've actually found that there is a brain within the heart, for real. <clears throat> and so this is now the brain that we're thinking about. So it gives a whole new <laughs> gives a whole new meaning to, you know, thinking with your little brain. <laughs> that's that's dirty talk for me. Yeah. <laughs> so men, now you can think with your little brain and it'll mean something totally different. So anyway, <clears throat> good thing almost nobody is listening to this live because then all the archive people can just laugh and go, what the heck's wrong with her? So uh anyway As we're shifting through this process, what's happening is that through all of our experience here on Earth, we've lived with this monkey sphere thing, right? As we've progressed through time, it's grown and it's expanded. And so it's not like this is the first time that it's expanded. If you think back to like caveman days, that kind of thing, (coughs) even back to... um, you know, the the 1700s, the 1800s, the 1900s, etc. We only knew about the people directly within our village or directly within our small town, and towns were very small back in the day. And so, and you didn't know everybody, in t- not everybody in town was in your monkey sphere. So this research was only current when they did it, all right, which is not all that long ago, I don't think. Um, but if they had been able to do this research of what was our monkey sphere all the way throughout time, if you were able to do that, I would be willing to bet where we're at about 150 now, we probably were at, you know, maybe 60 and then 90 and then 100 and whatever. You know, I'm sure it's been expanding out through time as we have uh, begun evolving And now the evolution that's coming into play is more a state of consciousness than physicality right now. And so we're feeling this shift in the monkey sphere where I think what's happening is a lot of people are feeling what's happening around the world or feeling what's, you know, for example, in Orlando. All right, I lived in Orlando. I grew up in Orlando. And uh, I had to move out of Orlando because I was feeling everything that was happening with everybody around me. I was feeling what they were feeling. I was feeling what they were thinking. I could, in a lot of cases, hear the chatter and the and just the static and that kind of thing. And, and um, it was difficult because I genuinely cared about the guy who just drove by in the car and I saw that, you know, he was going to go home and find his wife with somebody. Or I felt the child who who walked by me in a store that I knew was going to have whatever experience they were going to have down the line. I could feel all of it as if they were my friends and family. And it was too much for me to process. So I had to move to a place where there were not as many people in my immediate environment because it seems to be that, it seemed at the time, whoever was near me, even within you know, 50, 100-mile radius, whatever, I was picking up on so many of them that I couldn't process it, and it was making me a little nutty. And so now what I find, this is, let me see, I would say that was probably um, as of, I think, 2009, I had to leave Orlando. And so... Since then, I went to Vero Beach, and then I came out to Flagstaff, and I even can't even be in Sedona because it's it's so heightened there. So I'm in Flagstaff up on a mountain, and not that you have to move to a mountain, okay? I think I'm probably, uh, 
an extreme case. <laughs> you know, I don't think most people are like me. A lot of them are, more and more all the time. But, um, you know, for me, what I find is that so many people are becoming a part of what I feel, what I experience, what I, you know, if I hear about somebody experiencing something, I feel it on a level of someone who knows them, who who feels for them, you know. And so it's important that I balance that with with space and time for myself and that kind of thing to balance it. Because what used to be a monkey sphere of, say, 150 people, I'm just going to use their research, um, is now seeming to open up to loads and loads more, more than I could process with my human brain. So there has to be a space where I can just be with the trees and the land and the earth and that kind of thing to balance it out. So I think this is happening with a lot of people around our planet that they're beginning to become enlightened and become more compassionate and feel more for their fellow humans or earth elements, that kind of thing. I think I think a lot of people are feeling the water, the marine life, the animals, the the plant life. I know it may sound crazy, but that's okay because it's a show with a mystic, so it's going to sound crazy. That's all right. That's why you're here, right? So we feel what's going on with the deforestation, with the animals just being annihilated and their homes being pulled away. And there's so much shifting and changing that <clears throat> our monkey sphere is beginning to encompass so much more than it ever did before. And so we are um, needing to learn how to process that. So on that note, I'm going to pull our caller, our caller over. Good morning. Hello, You're the only one who's live today at least on the phone. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> I know. I feel so greedy I'm because I'm like, oh, you. <laughs> I'm always taking her time. But <laughs> it's, so it's, funny because she, it's exciting <laughs> because as of yesterday, we actually broke 14,000 listens, which is pretty cool since I don't oh, promote the show at all. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty neat. <laughs> but only 600 and something are live. So yeah, when, when probably I do the these shows, they have to come everybody, after work. Yeah, almost everybody's <laughs> listening to the archives. So, um, so what do you think about this today? I think Have it's you... great, and that's where my question is coming from. You know how everyone is saying, okay, it's the awakening, and is the smaller um, monkey sphere that we thought that we had before, could it be possible that back in the way, way back, you know, before everything was altered, that – our monkey sphere did include us all because you know how they say we're all one and, you know, um, you know, we cared about us, the earth, nature. Could it have been back then that it was much bigger? But now um, that, you know, we've been asleep, we kind of had made it where it was smaller as opposed to, um, like you said, everyone, we don't really look at, you know, people who we may see, you know, throughout the day and, and kind of know you may say hi or whatever, but you don't really consider them. And a lot of right. like with all the horrible things that are happening, you know, I know I, I do. I always pray for the people, you know, I always try to send light to the situation because <laughs> there's so many. But I'm just wondering, was there a time that we all included, you know, at least everyone that, you know, we could see but even that was a lie, you know, because they told us, oh, you know, the ancients didn't travel in the skies. They couldn't do this. They couldn't do that. <laughs> but we've been lied to. You know what I mean? Right, so right. So I'm just wondering, like, knowing who they really were and that they were so much adv- more advanced than we were, was their mm-hmm. monkey scared literally everyone, you know. And well, I it's think just once you get up to, a- I, I, not to cut you off, but I <laughs> think it's, um, when you get down into the third and fourth dimensions, that's where the monkey sphere starts kicking in, and it's mostly with the human brain, you know, or with the brain, not just the human, because animals also have monkey spheres. But um, when you move out of that space, because the fourth dimension is really just like Earth, so our concepts when we're in the fourth dimension are very much like our concepts here on Earth. We just forget that we don't have the brain. So... 
I think once you move into fifth dimensional state of being, then that element is no longer there. There's no more of that monkey sphere limitation because in the fifth dimension, that's where we are. We go back to our home of, of we're all one, you know? Okay. And we truly feel that. So, for instance, when I go into meditation, I've I've never actually, um, and I didn't realize this, but I, I never go into the fourth dimension. I never go into the astral plane. And so... Um, I only know this because I had a teacher who was teaching people how to go into the next dimension in their meditations to go up and out of third dimension. And he he straight up told me, this is not for you. You just go where you go. And I, of course, thought, well, what the hell? I can do what everybody else does, thinking (laughs) that he thought I couldn't do it. And so I went into the afternoon. But he was more picking up on how sensitive you are when you're there. Yeah. He's like, you already go way further than anybody else does, so just don't don't go where they do because you won't like it. But he didn't tell me that part because he couldn't in front of the class. And so he was yeah. very politely going, well, do you just go where you normally go? It's fine. So I went into the fourth dimension, and good for me it was horrible because I was used to the fifth dimension and beyond. Oh. And so I know that when we go into that fifth dimension, um, that's when we break through that limitation. <clears throat> and so I think... Any time that we have been more in the fifth dimension way of thinking, that, yes, that's been a part of things like probably Atlantis, Lemuria, that kind of thing. Yeah. But it's But it's like we came from that higher state of being and we lowered yeah. instead of this time when we're here and we're raising our state of consciousness. And I don't know that, obviously, because I haven't gone in and... <coughs> and ask that particular question, but as we're talking about it right now, that's kind of what I'm feeling is that we were learning to come into the third dimensional way of being, and now we're learning how to get out of the third dimensional way of being, you know? So because there are lessons that come from third dimension that are beneficial, but I feel like we're beginning to move out of it. And so when we talk about, like, the monkey sphere thing, they talk about, you know, like when you were a kid and you'd see your teacher out in a regular place, and you're like, "But wait, you're yeah. a person." <laughs> I can remember one of my kids. I know. I, which one, I can but too. Actually, going, she's a person. <laughs> like she has life I remember it myself. You know, yeah. like, and and for some reason, I don't know, I didn't like it. You know, and I yeah, was right. She was just at the store. And I was like, hi, but there was something in me. You know, I talked to her and everything, but I didn't like. I, there was something that was unsettling about seeing her not Because that class. put her in your monkey sphere whether you wanted her there or not. <laughs> and she was a teacher that I liked. So right. tell me, how does that, that doesn't make well, sense. Well, and it's funny because my mom was a teacher and she was the teacher that everybody loved, right? Everybody loved yeah. her. But I can remember going places and people seeing her and being like, wait, what? You have like a husband and a daughter and you do what? <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> and you're buying food. Like, what? <laughs> you know, it's like I know you're not that's even so human, strange. That's because they're outside the monkey sphere, and when they, okay. when you begin to see them as a person, then it's like, well, damn. Okay, you just broke through the seal of the monkey sphere, and I don't know how I feel about that. You know, and so that's yeah. a lot of times what we feel when, like, the media kind of thrusts stories upon us. I don't know about you, but when I open my internet and I see a story about something that happened to somebody. Yeah. Um, and it's like, it, like it's like don't go to it, it's almost just like me. sit to you. Yeah. Yeah, it just, it okay, is. but that's not my monkey's here. Don't put it in my face. And so I actually yeah. have it, and I know this is bad, but it's because I'm so sensitive and I just like take them all on. It's ridiculous. So I actually have to have my computer, my son sets it up so that I don't ever see any of that. And so, yeah. like, my home page is not is not the news stuff. Like, it's just a, a pretty much a blank search page, and um, and we have it set up so that when I click on on my email, it just brings in the login page, not the home page with all the news and stuff. Like, we really take measures to make sure that yeah. I don't even get any of that because I'm already so um, I've I've expanded to the point where. I really do just the second it's right in my face, that's it. They're right into my monkey sphere, 
and so I've got how many people to try and process and work with and you know and so it's too much because it's expanding and so while I can sit in meditation and send stuff out to whoever may need it because I feel like everybody's in my monkey sphere um it's becoming that way it wasn't always that way but it's becoming that way so I just have to send the love and light out to them you know and and try yeah. not to take in too many of the facts because I do still have a human brain, <laughs> even though this switch is happening. Yes. And the facts that come flying at us because of the media and social media, and there's so much flying at us all the time that we can't process it all. We just no. short circuit. I actually don't watch any of the corporate news for that exact reason because it is set up to bring you all the doom and gloom, you know. Right. And it's like um, I do check out Democracy Now! because that's definitely a show where you can get the information, uh, but it's also, you know, worldwide. So you're kind of getting right. all of the information, but not all the, you know, craziness that the corporate <laughs> news tries to stress right. at you. Because that's why you don't like it. That's why I stopped watching it. Because you can right. really only watch, you know, a good 15 minutes of it, but it'll bring your vibration down because it's programmed to all the negative, you know. It right. never ever well, sees any of the positive. What happens is as we're shifting in consciousness and our, our monkey spheres are becoming less about our brain and more about our heart, um, as we see these different, any anything about anybody, okay, when we get these facts and we connect with somebody's energy, it's kind of like they're absorbing into our monkey sphere. So that's one more person to process and handle. Well, if we can control what we're connecting with, and this is something they're just showing me as we're talking, so that's kind of cool. And we've talked about in other shows, when you choose what you're connecting with, um, so say instead of seeing the news and seeing <coughs> like the the actor, the the popular actors and actresses and all their drama and whatever, because they become a part of your monkey sphere too, whether you know them or not. If you get really caught up in like all the, the real housewives and the Kardashians and all that stuff, those people then become a part of your monkey sphere. You're not a part of theirs, but they're a part of yours. And so instead what we can do is align with, you know, the people that are doing the things that, that we're connected with. So, and I always go to the same people because I just try to stay very neutral, but like Wayne Dyer or um, who is the lady with uh, Course in Miracles, Marion Williamson or something like that, Williams? Um, the, the different people who are doing things that are that are kind of enlightened and that inspire us and, and that sort of thing. So if we can instead make those people the ones that enter our monkey sphere, learn about them, have them become human beings to us, and then just sort of let the the reality stars and the pop stars that are creating drama and whatever, like all of that stuff, allow that to just, you know, that's just not a part of my sphere. And then that's not what we're bringing into our energy because that's essentially what our monkey sphere is also doing is they're, we're saying, yes, I'd like your energy in mind, please. And so whether they know us or not, they can become a part of our monkey sphere. Does that make sense? <laughs> Did we lose you? I think she's gone. <laughs> Good thing I can just talk forever and ever to myself. All right, so we did lose you, I believe. So if you're talking, I, I'm not hearing you, so I pulled you back over to mute for now. Um, so we want to be conscious of this monkey sphere thing, and we want to understand that although it's not what the research is saying, it is what, what I'm being told as I meditated upon this for the show and that kind of thing last night, is that it's moving from our human brain, it's not only existing in our human brain, but it's also existing in our heart brain. And so <clears throat> that feeling of compassion for whatever it is you're connected to. Uh, so if you're connected to the concern about the Fukushima thing that's going on, and I won't go into more detail because I'm not going to pull you into it if it's not something you're already into, <coughs> or if you're concerned about the vets that are experiencing whatever is being experienced there or, you know, 
whatever cause it is that you're feeling connected to, um, you want to decide for yourself if that becomes a part of your monkey sphere. And it seems to me that things that we care about is what becomes a part of our heart monkey sphere, and the people, individuals, are what becomes a part of our our head brain, logical brain uh, monkey sphere. So we actually have two of them that we're working with at this point. And it can be a little overwhelming um, to sort of process and keep track of. But if we can become aware of, okay, so this person is coming into my life. For instance, I have kids, right? (coughs) And so when they... uh, I need a cough button or something, right, to mute everything when I cough. Um, When we – oh, our caller is back, so I'm going to pull her over. So, okay, you there? Yes, I don't know what happened. It was just dead air. Yeah, and then I couldn't hear, so I thought maybe you had fallen off and, (laughs) you know, you weren't on. And then it kept being dead, so I said, well, let me just try to call back because – Well, there you are. So – (laughs) <laughs> I was just going, I don't know if you heard me or not, but I was just going into, like, so I have kids, right? So my yeah. monkey sphere, not only is my monkey sphere, but there are friends that my kids have that become a part of my monkey sphere. Yeah. You know, and and friends that those kids have that sometimes become a part of my monkey sphere. And so this is this ever-expanding thing, and... It's important for us to be conscious of, and I think this is a new thing. I don't think they've done research on it, obviously, but I think we have a monkey sphere that is like the original one that has to do with our brain, but then I think we also are beginning to develop one that goes with our heart that's probably larger, you know, that has to do with causes and different things. So um, I just wanted to finish that thought as I had started it before I pulled you over. So, yeah. Okay. I wonder, so, too, is the monkey sphere like, um, you know how they say everything that's in our lives was attracted by us or, you know, bought to us either to learn something from or um, to contribute something to? So is that the monkey sphere itself or is that something else? I would say that's probably something else because, quite honestly, I have people in my monkey sphere that, um, I mean, yes, I think... <coughs> I think you can learn from everybody that's in your life. And I I understand the premise behind that, that everybody's here to teach us something. But I also know that, you know, we come into families, right? So you may come into yeah. a family with a whole lot of people in it, and maybe you all, in your own ways, needed to learn. Say you've got, say, six brothers and sisters or cousins or whatever. So maybe I needed to learn from cousin number one and number three, and you came into my family and you needed to learn from cousin number three and number six and number two. And, you know, we're just a group of people that needed to learn from each other, but did we necessarily all need to learn from all of one another? Like, you may have, I've seen sisters and brothers, you know, families where, you know, there's just some you don't connect with, you know? It just is what it is. But you both came to experience that same upbringing or some of the other siblings or some of the other family members. And so it was like coming, you know, a bunch of people come to the same bus station, but they're not all catching the same bus. So it's kind of like that. But then those people in your family are still in your monkey sphere, whether you actually came to learn from them or not. Okay. You know, so it's it's much more the monkey sphere thing is, completely a third dimensional thing completely a brain bound analytical thing it's it's brain function 100 percent in the sense of the research that we're talking about but then i think you go into the heart aspect of it and i think that's what's happening is it's beginning to move from the head to the heart and it's it's not moving out of the head and into the heart but it's expanding out to that heart chakra where now I think we're coming more into that fifth dimensional state of being where, yes, you have your <clears throat> earthly monkey sphere, which is the people in your life and that kind of thing. <coughs> um, but then I think we have our heart monkey sphere 
which begins to incorporate more and more people, places, things, energies, what have you. Because I find that, you know, I have beings from other places that I work with, whether it's angelic or star beings or ascended masters, they're very real. I have real relationships with these beings. And they train me, they're teachers, they're friends, they're whatever. And um, and I, it may sound crazy to some people, but it's kind of what I do. That's why I'm dubbed a mystic, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um, But they're still in my monkey sphere, but more from the heart than from the head, you know. Okay. So I think it's really beginning to shift. And so I think that what you're talking about probably falls in the heart monkey sphere, if that makes sense. It does. It actually does. Thank <laughs> you, know, you it's so funny. I'm really new to all of this, so, but it does make sense, you know. Well, it's yeah. really funny because last night I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm in my meditation, I'm like, could I please have the topic of show tonight instead of two minutes until the show tomorrow? Because wow. that's usually <laughs> what happens. Literally two <laughs> minutes until the show, I get it. And so they... I I got monkey sphere, and I'm thinking, oh, great, because I don't really know the monkey sphere stuff. I did back when we did the class, but I haven't reviewed it in a long time. Uh, yeah. So I checked a little bit and just renewed my knowledge of it, just kind of refreshed things a little bit, and I thought, but that's not a whole new show. And so now we've got like 13 minutes left, so clearly I was, but I didn't know this whole other aspect of there being a secondary like the heart based thing, that's all just coming to me as we're doing the show. Like I didn't have any of that before we started. So Oh uh, wow, okay. Yeah, no, see that's what I do. That's my, my I guess if you want to say my gift is that I just stay an open channel. And so like even when I do classes, yeah. anybody who's taken my classes knows I don't actually get the class. I'll get the label of the class and a little write up maybe. And I don't actually get the class until everybody's signed up. And then it just, bam, downloads as we're actually doing the class. So we have to, uh, I always have to ask somebody to record the class so I can go back and find out what I did during the class because I don't have a clue. And that's probably because <laughs> whatever is mostly needed by all the people in the class is what comes Exactly. You know, so you, exactly. yeah. So it's always so especially made to the up. people who are in the class. So, yeah, so that's just kind of what I do, and then I have to go back and listen to go, well, what did I say? That was really cool. What were you guys talking about? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I don't really know what you label that gift, but that's 